UFPS is the most popular first-person shooter on the Asset Store, and it just got better with the version 2 release. Version 2 takes a no-compromises approach and leverages the best parts of UFPS and our other character controller, the third-person controller. Right now, I'm playing through a scene that we'll set up in this video. As I'm walking through this scene, you'll notice that there's full body awareness and there's also a custom weapon, this minigun, that I've created. This subway train is using the moving platform system and then there's an AI agent wandering around here that's driven by behavior designer and then it's using UFPS for the character controller. So there he is. So before we really get started, let's first take a look at the assets that I'm using for this video. The scene is this urban underground asset. The main character and the minigun is within this, within FPS weapons. Behavior designer is going to control the UFPS AI agent. And then of course I'm using UFPS. All right, so let's go ahead and start with a fresh urban underground scene. We go ahead and hit play, and the first thing, well, you'll notice that I'm getting a few warnings, and that's just because I don't have the character in here yet. But this urban underground scene is actually really neat because it provides a train that will be that will convert to be able to be used by UFPS. So I think, you know, I guess that's not the train that's being animated. There is an animated train right over there. So yeah, this this is the moving platform that we'll we'll set up. But before we get to that, I first want to set up the camera so that it can work with the UFPS because if you notice on this camera script, we just have the post-processing behavior, so we don't really have much on here right now. To set up the camera, we're going to go to Tools, Opsiv, Ultimate Character Controller, then we're going to click this Main Manager button. All the UFPS settings or main character item settings can be managed within this Character Manager. It's actually a really convenient way to make quick edits and new changes. So the first thing that I'm going to do is click on this setup tab because we want to set up a new scene. I've already done a few of these steps, but the main one I wanted to show was setting up this camera. And we are going to set up a first person camera using the first person view type. This view type is what you would expect in a first person game where forward is forward, back is back, and whatnot. There's also a free look, look type where the camera can rotate independently of the character. If we go, we, well, we could go ahead and hit set up camera right now, but I'm going to select a profile just so that there's a preset values that are initialized to this camera when I hit setup. This just makes everything easier and quicker so that if you know that you have a set of values you like, you can just go ahead and use that. And I, I've already set up some values that work well with this camera. And all of these different states came along with that. So now if I hit play, but still we actually make an error just because the camera's not set up with anything. Yeah, so we we can't find a character. So let's go ahead and create a character because now both the camera and Urban Underground are complaining that we haven't set up a character. So I think it's time. You can set up a character under the Character Manager, which is in this same editor window where we did the setup. And we're going to be under the New Character tab and we're going to kind of follow the same options that we did with the camera, or the same initial options where we want first person perspective and the movement type is combat. The character specifies a character model and since we're going to be using full body awareness, I'm going to select Soldier 1. Soldier 1 will use an animator and it is a humanoid. We're going to be using the demo animator controller provided within UFPS and we're going to use these third person, or we're going to keep the third person objects blank. The next step that we're going to look at are these advanced fields, and we're pretty much going to leave them all to the default. I am going to point out Ragdoll because we do have this selected, so when the UFPS character dies, a Ragdoll will play. And in order for this to occur, we need to go through Unity's Ragdoll wizard. So as soon as I hit build character, it will build the UFPS character. I can get that out of the way now. And then 
UFPS or the Unity Ragdoll Wizard also opened. So let me find where the soldier is at. And now you'll see that as soon as I hit create, all the Ragdoll Colliders will be added. All right, that's perfect. The pivot position for this character is beneath the collider, or I guess the center of the character is beneath the collider, but as soon as the character starts animated, he'll pop up. So that's, that's not, not a problem. But let's go ahead and position this character. And that looks, that looks good enough. So now, as soon as we hit play, assuming we did everything correctly, we should have a first person character in the scene. Yep. So that looks good, and he also animates. But I guess what does not look good is this camera is way above the character. So just to get a different view of that, we can see that this camera does not look like it's in a first person view at all. It almost looks like it's a third person view. So to switch that, let's go ahead and click on the camera. And then we need to adjust this anchor offset and we'll change it to a value of 0 0.8. Now when we hit play, we should look like we're in a first person view. And yeah, that looks a lot better. You do notice though that the character's head and the hands are getting in the way. And what we can do to prevent this from happening is well, there's two different ways. The first way is to have a separate mesh or a separate material for just the hand or the arms and the head so that I could disable those and you disable them to prevent the, any clipping with the camera. Or there's a little trick where you can set the bone weight to zero and then that will also get rid of the the head and the arms. So let me click on the neck and we'll set or we'll set the bone scales to zero instead of the bone weight. So now he no longer has a head. And then we'll do the same thing for the arms. The one disadvantage of this approach is that you don't get correct shadows. So I recommend having things separated out. But now, actually, let's move that back down. So now when we hit play, we should get the full effect where now you won't get any clipping with the head. So things are good.